The doctor is mistaken. I am at last in the best years of my life, a golden age, after so many years of striving. I need to express my lifelong love of women in these new studies. When their eyes are closed they are dreaming, inward looking, and allow me to accompany them into their secret world. I had to give up sculpting because the stone dust worsened my tuberculosis, but these paintings are an excellent substitute. Finally, my friend Zoborowski has agreed to pay for models to pose nude. I paint them honestly as real women. I refuse to bow to the prudish by painting allegories and allusions to classical stories. My reveries have given me a fresh palette, new combinations of colour, finer brushwork for the female form. The police seized five paintings from my exhibition. They are considered obscene. I sold nothing. My sculpting has been taken from me, now my paintings of nudes. I will return to portraiture. I have Jana, she has una Madonna, una Dea, Bella, Serena. Her incomparable red hair those enchanting blue eyes. I don't have the words. My paint must express my feelings. I have never been so productive. Jeanne lit a fire in my brain. Wine fuels the fire. Feverish activity. It was not just Jeanne's inspiring me that caused the fever. The doctor was right. After 20 years, the tuberculosis is approaching the terminal stage with new pains in my kidneys and headaches. I have to interrupt my work with Jana for another commission, Hamka. She looks both inward and outward, an ambiguity, part of female mystery. Today, I at last captured the essence, the majesty of Lunia. But it is Jana who inspires me the most. My passion for her has made me realize I have never before experienced absolute love. How much suffering am I supposed to bear and still work to support my wife and child? Typhoid, scarlet fever, Spanish influenza after the world war, and oh yes, pleurisy. I feel like Job. 
Maybe I should be a believer and thank Yahweh for Jana and my beautiful daughter. Those who do not know how hard I have to work to produce a painting every single day think I am some pathetic addict. No one knows that I just pretend to be suffering the ravages of hashish and cocaine and absinthe to hide my tuberculosis, which would make me a pariah if the word spread. Picasso gossips all across Paris. The way people now shorten my name make it sound the same as the French word mordi, wretched, accursed. They are right. I now regret my anger at everyone and everything, especially Jeanne. The short time I have left had become meaningless. I embrace Nietzsche's idea that God is dead. If I could have just five more years, then I could demonstrate in my paintings that God is not dead. He has just deserted me for a while. I will go to temple and pray. I yearn to see baby Jeanne and become a young woman. I can feel worse. My body continues to betray me. I find myself singing the Kaddish. It haunts me, churning round and round in my head. Nothing but my extinction will obliterate this prayer for the dead. I have stopped going to temple. Chronic and vicious headaches have started again. Shana is growing another child and grows even more ravishing just as our love grows. We look at one another, her eyes are tunnels, I see straight through her to eternity. I long for that certainty of our being together forever. Through her blue eyes I become her, everything will be well. I needed all the pain and poverty and chaos of my life, the long, long search in my work to get me to this time and place. When she turns away, we are still one. She will live forever like the sculptures of Africa and ancient Egypt and Greece that have inspired me. I have completed a new painting at her request a self-portrait. I will live on forever, although the doctors at the hospital are saying I am dead. It cannot be true, because when they were taking me away in the ambulance, Jeanne cried out that we would be together again very soon.